Hey guys, it's Stacy from My Petite Garden. Happy New Year, and I hope you all had a wonderful new year. Um, I thought let's start off this new year with a video dedicated to one of the plants in my collection that is truly very dear to my heart has been through a lot with me and has been in my collection for quite some time and that is my Passiflora trifasciata or commonly known as I think um, passion vine or tri-colored passion vine yeah or I think some people will call it turkey's foot or something like that it does look it does resemble like like chicken feet or turkey feet or something like that and I think someone commented and said it looks like little dino feet so it's really adorable it's a it's a wonderful plant um, very fast grower so I wanted to dedicate a video to it because I do get quite a few questions from you guys about this plant uh, regarding its care and propagation things like that so today we're gonna discuss all of that and I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it somewhat useful. So let's get started. So a quick little backstory on at least my plant. Uh, I've had the Passiflora plant in my collection for, I don't know, like three, four years maybe. Yeah, it's been a long time. I got it as a, and I get asked this a lot about where I, I acquired my Passiflora because apparently it is still quite hard to find. I think it's because not a lot of people seek it out. Not a people, not a lot of people look for it. So not there's not a lot of sellers out there that sell this particular vine. It's such a fast-growing vine that I can't imagine if the demand was higher. I think a lot more sellers would be selling it. Yeah, so I actually got my plant uh, as a like one long cutting. Uh, I believe it was the rooted cutting from Etsy. Uh, I did a search on online I believe and it just popped up on Etsy and the seller was selling it for like I don't remember how much I paid for it it was under $20 I think um, for a rooted cutting it was a really long gangly looking cutting but I was like I didn't care I really wanted it I forgot where I saw it that made me want it but it was I think it was either on Instagram or on a YouTube video somewhere. I don't remember exactly, but so I was on the hunt for it and I found one and I was like, sold. So I bought it. Um, when I received it, it was even more gangly looking than in the pictures. So I ended up chopping it almost right away. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I never had a passion vine before. Um, so I just chopped it up into little pieces, <laughs> stuck it in water, and hoped that it roots. And it did. It actually rooted so easily in water that I was like, oh, okay. So that's where my mother plant started, and that is the mother plant that you'll see here on screen. It grows really well. I'll put up some pictures of where it, I think personally, it looked the best. It looked its fullest, and I also have pictures obviously of it when it looked uh, when I first potted it up, when it was just a bunch of cuttings, it looked like nothing you would really care for. I think this plant looks great when it is uh, very full. When it's doing well, I think it is very attractive. I think this plant is native to uh, South America. I actually have it written down, hold on. So it is actually native to Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil. So I would love, love, love to see this plant out in, in like its natural habitat. I want to see it grow in the wild. I think there are quite a few different types of this um, Passiflora. Uh, I have the Trifasciata one. I think there's like a couple other differ different varieties that look similar. Um, this particular one has, as I mentioned, tricolor. So it has three colors to the foliage. It's green with like silver band like a silver stripe down the middle and then it also has like a purplish reddish tint to it so the higher light you give it the more purple it turns if you grow it in lower light it will stay more green and i actually personally prefer it more green 
So the great thing about this passion wine is that it can grow in almost any light condition. It can withstand like really high light because I have grown it in high light, I've grown it in low light. And my mother plant actually grows in, I would consider medium to low light, more on the low light side. It's right next to a north facing window and it really doesn't get much sunlight, but it grows fantastic. So that's what makes it so great. Now, when it comes to watering though, that is where you have to be very careful because I hear from a lot of you guys that your plant tends to drop its leaves, uh, the leaves get crispy or brown and that is very likely due to watering. This plant is a plant that will react very quickly if you do not water it consistently and frequently. It is very thirsty uh, and you can I think you can kind of tell by how thin the foliage is. It's nearly just thinner than paper uh, so it doesn't hold a lot of water. And I grow mine in terracotta, as some of you know. So I water mine every other day. The second I miss a watering, it will drop its leaves and it will start crisping and browning and there's no coming back from that. And that's what happened during my period of neglect uh, last year. I ended up cutting the whole plant back and not really not really thinking it's gonna come back to be very honest with you and I don't blame it if it doesn't but it did come back and I'm so glad it did because I truly love this plant it's my spirit plant I think I mentioned that in my um, video that I made last year in the resilient house plant video that I made I I love that video because it was basically rounded up all the plants that I wanted to show appreciation to that stuck by me throughout the year <laughs> and story time. I don't know if you guys want to hear it, but um, during my postpartum period, there was a time where I was struggling a lot. Um, I don't think I talked about it much. I went through a period where it was just rough. Physically, mentally, I was, I was struggling. So, and it really reflected on my plans because they were, they were suffering. And I called it the great neglect of 2021. It was bad. I, I think there was a period of time where I didn't even check on it for weeks. And um, it went from a really full, luscious, beautiful passion vine to bare stems pretty much. And I um, chopped it back. Yeah. All the way back to nothing. And then as soon as I started recovering, it started recovering and I think that's why I call it my spirit plant because I felt like it was on the same wavelength as me during last year. Um, we, not last year, the year before, um, we suffered through our hard times together and then we recovered together. Yeah. I just think plants are so special and they're in our lives for a reason, you know? Um, yeah, that's the watering. I have to have to water it very consistently. So that is the number one thing. A light, it's not too picky about. I found that it does well in any light conditions as long as it's getting some sort of light. Propagating is also super easy. I hear some of you tell me that you struggle with propagating um, the, this plant. Uh, I'm not sure why because I have not experienced any issues. I've only propagated this plant in water and it's done fine. I think I get like 90% success rate. There are times when there are one or two cuttings that just don't make it and that's fine. That happens with any plant. But for the most part, I don't have any issues. I just stick it in the water and I leave it alone. And it actually starts rooting really quickly. So I will show you guys probably some clips of me propagating um, from my mother plant. Um, just to show you guys how I do it since it seems like some of you struggle with it a little bit. But 
I haven't personally had any issues, so I can't tell you what might be the cause of it. I would say water is the way I propagate and that's how I find success with it. I've never tried any other substrate with this particular plant in terms of propagation. Here you will see me cutting the long vine that I propagated from my mother plant and I'm just cutting them into one or two leaf cuttings and then from here I'll just stick it directly into water and start the propagation. From my experience, the roots will usually start coming out at the very bottom of the stem and it usually starts propagating, at least for me, in about um, one or two weeks usually, I'll start seeing some roots forming. Here is an example of a cutting that I have been rooting in water for quite a while and you see how the roots are forming at the very bottom. Well, some of you ask me whether I trellis it or give it something to climb on. I have never done that. Um, I have my mother plant hanging on against my wall and there are other plants and other things around it. I'm telling you, this guy will find its way on its all. It's got these tendrils, it sends out, and it just kind of starts grabbing onto everything. It's grabbed onto my blinds, it's grabbed onto uh, other plants, it's grabbed onto the macrame. I've never had to worry about giving it something to climb because it will find its way. So yeah, no, I don't worry about um, chalicing it, but you can definitely do that if you want to, and I'm sure it would appreciate it. I, per just, I personally just don't do it. Um, and I also love the look of it dangling, um, like just hanging, I love it. A couple of things that I just wanted to mention is the humidity. I literally just give it the regular household humidity that I have in my home and I think it's normally around 25%-ish, I don't think it goes any higher than 30%. And then in terms of the potting soil or the potting mix that I use for this plant, it's just my regular Aeroid Hoya potting mix that I um, have previously shown you guys. So I don't think it's too picky about soil either. I think I've covered everything. If there's any more questions you guys have that I didn't cover in this video, please just leave it in the comments and I will definitely try my best to answer them if I have the answer. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!